Hi guys, welcome to our channel. I hope I didn't give you too much of a fright with that opening scene there, <laughs> don't worry. I looked online how to cut into a cylinder, a gas cylinder, and did it properly. Last week we changed all the rams on the digger, except for the two small ones of the blade, and they were just impossible to open. And yesterday the hydraulic shop I took them to gave me a call and said come and see the state of it because they managed to open one of them. So I took apart the other one and went in and had a look and the thread is just completely eaten away and destroyed. So they're going to have to take it to a guy with a lathe to re-thread it and I don't know what but basically it's going to cost a bomb and it's going to be another week. So today I woke up <laughs> and just biochar boom in my head I've been researching how to make biochar and obviously all the benefits of biochar in the garden for the past four or five years I do like this workshop on YouTube by living web farms we'll put the link to the to the workshop in the description below I think there's three or four maybe five parts and um, but it's really really interesting and I've decided I want to try and make it with the same retort method um, the only thing is, they use a 55 gallon drum and a 30 gallon drum, one inside the other and he says you get about 10 burns before the barrels start disintegrating and over here in sunny Portugal we don't get free barrels like in the States or many other countries. So I've decided to build something of my own here. I've got some fire bricks which can withstand 800 degrees Celsius so these should be last I don't know how long, we'll, we'll find out over the next year, I guess. And for the inside retort, I cut open a gas cylinder. No sparks. I had emptied most of it. Okay, water. Then I got my cylinder and I drilled five holes in the bottom, they're about half inch and I also made a little lid for it from a piece of sheet metal that I had lying around. So before we make biochar, some of you may be asking what the hell is biochar and why is it good for the garden? Some other people might also be saying isn't biochar just a fancy word for charcoal? No, they're different. Charcoal is made at much lower temperatures so it doesn't have the same surface area inside as biochar and also there might still be some volatiles left over inside whatever organic material you're using. So think of biochar as a, a sponge which can soak up nutrients and water and, and have microorganisms living in there. Inside one gram of biochar there's the surface area of two tennis courts. <laughs> Crazy right? So whereas charcoal is still made with the pyrolysis method which is heating without oxygen it's much lower temperatures so some of the volatiles like methane and carbon monoxide wouldn't have been thrown out of it or burnt in our case so yeah definitely not the same thing and it's good for the garden because it retains a lot of water and there's not all these microorganisms like I said 
and all the nutrients that they feed on inside it. Now you get about a third in weight of what you put in. So you get a third of biochar of whatever um, feedstock you put into the retort. So it makes sense to use a hardwood so you get more biochar out. So biochar basically is like a delivery system, a nutrient and water delivery system to your plants. So you can even inoculate it with the kind of things that the plant you're going to use it on likes. But we'll go into that in more detail next week when we actually inoculate our biochar. So today we're just going to make some biochar, but if you want to see how I actually built this, we'll head over to our sister channel, Off Gridding on a Shoestring, and we'll put a video up there only about this. Okay, that's pretty nice and compact and full. So I'll put my lid on. So hopefully all the sticks around it will cook all that wood inside without burning it. And it will reach temperature first. It will smoke quite a bit apparently, um, which is releasing all the waters that's in it. But then it gets to that temperature where it starts releasing all the volatiles like methane, stuff you would see, which is basically smoke. And that should come out of the five holes at the bottom of the cylinder and continue cooking the wood inside the retort to make biochar. Now, one of the main reasons why I like the Living Web Farms um, method of doing this is, well, he says there's four rules to making biochar. The first rule is try and make the best biochar you can, might as well if you're gonna make it. The second rule is to use the energy that you're producing. So my plan is maybe if this works well, I'm thinking of using it as an outdoor kitchen burner. So this size, I'm calculating it should take about an hour and a half to two hours to turn that into biochar, we'll see. Um, but if I could have this a bit lower so I could cook on top, that would um, help us achieve the second rule. And the third rule is not to pollute. There's so many ways to make biochar, but some of them where, for example, you dig a big pit and you just light a fire and then cover it and smother it, you're releasing all those volatiles. Instead of burning it off as gas, you're releasing it into the atmosphere. So we don't want to do that, obviously. And the fourth rule is to make it profitable. Now, profitable means you're going to better your garden or whatever. So that doesn't mean literally money, but we'd definitely better our garden with this stuff if it works well. So enough blabber, let's get on with it. I'm just going to put a, a brick on top for the weight. And now I'm going to stuff all in here with um, all these Spanish broom branches that have been drying over the past year when we cleaned land. And my lovely assistant, Sarah, is going to help with her awesome tool. Ring. All right, it's pretty much full. It is losing its shape just because of all the sticks, but if this works, um, I'll cement them, the outside chamber. So, now, most people, when you look online, when they use a retort, they have a big chimney. Over here, they're super expensive, and you can't get them in a junkyard. Well, I haven't seen any. So I'm also gonna use fire bricks as well, and a bit of rebar. Let's see how this goes.
higher the rise, the better the draw. So we'll see how high we can go. I think I've got eight horses. Now, I think we should light it before we carry on building. Okay, that's enough. Okay, it seems to have caught slowly. We'll give it some time, but I think I'll start building up the riser slowly. The higher I go, the higher the flame goes. <laughs> Good, eh? I think so. <laughs> Look at the flame. It gets higher and higher. Super high. It's, it's like a rocket stove. It's sucking in from underneath, you know? So. Look, it's already going like a rocket stove. One more over here. Oh yes, of course, there's one more. Okay, so now I'm going to leave this. I think it's going to be two hours, but I'm going to stay with it, because just in case, even if the pigs come and rub up against it or something, um, till it goes out. And then we'll leave it till the morning and then drench, if we made biochar correctly, with water. We'll see. I don't want to get too close, but it's been burning for a just over an hour and all the water's gone it's burning the gases out of the feedstock in the bucket so it's just gas now even 12 meriba <laughs> melts can you see the mess that it's in i can't believe it's still standing tower leaning tower of pisa um i don't know if we're going to get any biochar out of it but i definitely have to change the way we close the top yeah, all my rebar has melted and bent. <laughs> I'm gonna let it burn out and then wait six hours, see if we even got any biochar, and start working on Mark II. Jackies, come, come, let's tell them what's going on on the farm today, come. You know what's happening today, Sunny? We are giving your eggs and Susie's milk to somebody else. And we're getting oranges and clementines, I believe, in exchange. How amazing is that? We have a lot of eggs. I opened the fridge today and we had more than 25 eggs. And these guys are giving us more than six a day. Sometimes six, sometimes seven, sometimes eight. And we have nine hens and one guinea fowl. But Penny is giving us maybe one egg every three or four days. It's not much, but the other chickens are doing really well. And we are eventually going to make pickled eggs with them, but right now we are not doing it. So it's really good that we found someone who wants eggs and they're giving us something that we really need because we don't have any fruit trees on our land and Peppa and Maggie love oranges the goats love oranges and we love oranges so it's brilliant and Luke was on one of these Facebook groups that said we have oranges and clementines if anyone wants them come get them because we have so many and he's like do you want milk and eggs in exchange and they're like yeah awesome and they don't even live that far away Wubbles do you want to tell them how you're doing with all the ladies Wubbles is doing really well he's flying everywhere and he, even though now he can use his feet, he prefers to use his wings because he's really good at flying, eh, wobbly pie. Oh. Don't, don't want to tell them. <laughs> stop, stop wobbles. Look. Look at this. Isn't he amazing? Isn't he becoming a beautiful cockerel? Wow, wobbles. You are really, really good. And his feet? Amazing. The only problem we have right now on the farm, and she isn't thriving, is Daisy because she has mastitis and she's getting, it's taking a long time to get over it. So, yeah, I will let you know how she's doing a little bit later on. Okay, let's see if there's any biochar. I doubt it because we are losing so much heat from the top here because of the bent rebar. And yesterday I took off the riser just because it was so, looked so dodgy, I didn't want it to fall over the night. <laughs> They look like dominoes now, these. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> rebar. How to bend rebar. <laughs> Crazy. Looks like biochar. So, good quality biochar. There's no brown on the inside, so it's cooked all the way through. No ash on the outside. There is a tiny bit here, but I think that's just what's fallen in. And it should sound like that. Wow. Yay, we made biochar. It's just the shell of what it used to be. <laughs> awesome. Black gold, baby. Black gold. I do have a plan on how to do this without the rebar. I'm thinking of buying some refractory cement and just cementing together the top and with some type of bar or something to lift and put on top. Um, I'll try and do that later today, we'll see. Clever girl, clever, clever girl. Up, 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 Daisy. Yes, Daisy. Good girl, good girl. Oh my goodness, clever. Clever Daisy, clever girl. Clever Daisy. Clever, clever Daisy. Okay, let's see Daisy. And your boobies. Let's do the hard one first. Okay. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Okay. Well done. This is the hard one. Good girl. Good girl. I know people. I know it's hard. It hurts you people. Okay, I think that's it. Clever. Very good. So I massage the cream in. Very good, Poopa. You're very good, Daisy. As well as having mastitis, she's also hurt her leg. When I say Daisy hurt her leg, I mean meatball. He pushed her off a little wall and she was she couldn't even put it down for a day and now she's just walking very slow on it. Oh my goodness, you're so super duper clever. Good girl. You're so super Good duper girl, clever. Daisy. Clever Daisy, clever, yeah, clever girl. You're clever, on the man, clever, Daisy, clever. Daisy Daisy. Clever, clever, clever girl. She's like, what's everyone doing to me? Okay, I'm gonna go up, okay? Okay. Come on, I'm just gonna get your baby dog. Please come. Come, Daisy, come. Come, good girl. Good girl, Daisy. Good girl. Good girl, Daisy. Good girl, Daisy. Poor Daisy is recovering really slowly and it looks like the antibiotics are not working as well as they did for Susie. She had five injections. The last one was two days ago and she doesn't seem that much better to tell you the truth. So we probably have to get the vet for her again. So hopefully we'll have some better news about Daisy next week. If at first you don't succeed, Try again. What's also awesome about biochar is the fact that, for example, this piece of oak over here, as it breaks down, if it was just here, it would be releasing CO2 into the atmosphere. Now we take that so we don't allow it to emit that CO2, which is awesome. But also, once this is turned into biochar, it sequesters CO2 from the atmosphere. So it's like double whammy. And the fact that we're doing this from waste that's on our land that we would normally burn, like many people do, and turning it into such an amazing resource is just fantastic. Yeah.
All right, let's time lapse this so we can see how it burns. Okay, it's been a couple of days because it was it was raining for two days. So I'm dying to see if we made biochar for the second time. It burnt pretty clean, so I'm very happy with my new lid. Looks Woo! good. No white either. No white. Check it out, guys. Wow, check that out. There's no ash, less ash than last time, eh? Mm -hmm. Alrighty, well that was a success. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> now we can't use, you can't use the biochar like this when you make it, but make sure you tune in next week where we inoculate it. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, and we'll do a couple next week, hey? Yeah, so awesome. we can start using it in the garden. It's also really good for animal feed, to mix in with the animal feed. Molly finds it delicious. Molly loves it. it. Eating biochar. Oh yeah, she likes that. <laughs> Molly, you've got a black face now. <laughs> Before we go, I'd like to welcome John to our channel members. I hope you enjoy the weekly Monday update. <laughs> and also Kathy and Yared, I think that's how you say your name. Thank you so much for putting something towards the renovation of our ruins. So thank you so Thanks, very guys. much. And as usual, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. Let's take it easy. See you next time. Bye. Ciao. Watch this one next. Hey, success. The lid did. Shut up, Larry. Success. So, shut up, Larry!